City Council on December 6th to make sure the resolution passes, but not only to make sure the resolution passes, to educate themselves. Unions, like I said, obviously have a direct link to corporations because the corporations basically want to make more money and give them as little benefits as possible. So that's a very easy argument to make. Environmental groups know firsthand how corporations come in and they they basically set the limits for how much pollution they can put into the air because they have regulators and the uh, EPA and all of these other organizations. But then there are other things that people don't think about as much. There's the military industrial complex that was mentioned before. And it goes further. Like, we have a huge, huge military budget. But I was in the military. I'm a veteran. It doesn't go to the soldiers. It doesn't go to the airmen. It doesn't go to the Marines. It goes to the higher ups. It goes to hugely expensive planes and drones and things that we don't even necessarily ever, ever use because no one in the world has an Air Force nearly as good as ours. Um, and then in Iraq and in Afghanistan, companies like Blackwater and Custer Battle basically fought our wars for us. And if you were a soldier over there, you were likely to meet one of these people. You were making something like $22,000 a year, and they were making something like $150,000. That's where our budget goes. And that's one of the ways we get soldiers to come around to the idea that the corporations are your problem. It's not just the country's military industrial complex. It's the fact that war is profitable. So there's no reason for these corporations to end war. Now, sort of blanking on some, oh, the prison industrial complex. It's something that we don't talk about as much. But in California, we're, we're, we're safer. Marijuana is legal, which I think is a great thing. But across the country, there are thousands or hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions of people in jail for offenses as small as smoking marijuana, which many doctors around the world will tell you is much safer for your body and better in the relief of pain. Now, the, the reason these people are incarcerated is because about 20 years ago, we started a trend of privatizing our prisons. And something I learned recently, privatizing our bail bond system, I was completely unaware. I thought it had already been private. But before, you know now, if, if you get arrested, your bail can be something like $10,000, $20,000. Before, it'll be $1,000 or $2,000, because that's something you would pay. Now the bail bonds people come in. So the judges raise it, because they know you can find a bail bonds person to pay it. So you, you still pay about the same, but if you get off, you don't get your money back. When it was a public system, you pay your bail. If you went to your trial and you were found innocent, you get your money back. Now it's a profit-making machine. So whether or not you are guilty, or whether or not there's a technicality, or whether or not, as we've seen and since the uh, advent of uh, DNA testing, you get off and you were framed like you said you were, you still have to pay that money and you never get it back. Um, and that's because prisons are profitable. In terms of immigrant rights, the same thing can be said. I was having a discussion at one of our meetings on Wednesday with one of our members who has a mentally disabled child. The mentally disabled and the immigrants. The mentally disabled, can you guys still hear me? The mentally disabled? Is there a good way to stop the uh, feedback? I think it's close to the mouth. Closer. Higher. 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 Is that good? Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, basically, the mentally, dis posture. the mentally disabled and the, uh, the immigrants are basically profit for corporations, for private prisons, for bail bonds. Because as soon as, it doesn't matter how long they stay in jail, but they get paid more the more prisoners they have in jail. And, and, and I, I, I usually say all of our society's ills or problems can be traced back to a corporation, but I'm going to test myself and ask you in the audience, if, if you have anything that's your passion, any, anything that you advocate for that you see is wrong in this society, and I'll try to see if I can, I can connect it to a corporation, because sometimes, you know, I mention a few things that might just be blowing smoke because I'm, I'm an anti-corporate person, but anybody have anything they want to try?
download it easy. Let's go. Okay. For about, I'd say, But they already had a system in place. And if you've studied any type of like revolutionary theory, you know the establishment always tries to maintain itself. So the music industry is the establishment. And if you're a musical artist or have a friend who is a musical artist, you know the record companies don't pay them shit. They can pay, they can sell a million records, but they don't make any money unless they tour work because that's theirs. While the record companies, if they sell a million albums, make millions and millions of dollars. So the transition to basically free music, or basically where musicians make music more on performance, basically cutting out the corporations, is something that scares the music industry, but benefits the artist completely. Because it cuts out the middleman. Because because of something like the internet, we don't need a record company. If somebody has good music, your friend will tell you about it, they'll friend will tell you about it, they'll, they'll hook up with some touring company, they'll come to, through town, and you'll see them. So, yeah, that's, that's the way that the corporations basically own the music industry and they're scared about it. Do you have another? I have one that's not related to corporations. It's child abuse. Child abuse? Okay. What's that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, that's more of a Russian government argument, but I, I'll, I'll definitely agree. Like, um, a, a lot of governments don't really have that much of a reason to go after child abusers, basically pedophiles, because they are industries that sort of prop up co countries like Russia. Um, and in and, and this vein, I would see, and I don't want to offend anybody, but the Catholic Church is a corporation that basically tried to protect itself instead of protecting children. And it's the same basic establishment versus the, you know, versus the people argument. Um, but basically, I, I, I wanted to mention really quickly before I went on. Our, our move to men's strategy, uh, when I first started working with this organization, we thought it was something that would take seven to 10 years because it meant the Constitution it's something that we've done nine times in the 20th century, but it hasn't been done since uh, we changed the voting age from 21 to 18, and I was in the 70s. So every time we mention it to people, people are like, yeah, how are you going to get all those people? But b before I came up here, I just I, I, I remembered a quote, and I wasn't exactly sure uh, who it was. And then, you know, when I Google searched it, I was like, how could I forget? But Frederick Douglass once said that power concedes nothing without a demand. And one of the things that the Occupy movement has done is demanded that we change the conversation. Because earlier this year we were duped into thinking that we had a debt crisis. And we were, we were told that we have to take the same austerity measures that are working so well in other countries like England. And that would fix, that would fix everything. Now, all of us know whether we were paying attention or not, that one of the biggest ways to ease the debt crisis so that we can, you know, focus on other things would be to simply let the Bush tax cuts expire. It's not that hard. It's the first step, it's not the solution, but it, it wouldn't take any anything. But because 50% of our Congress members are millionaires, essentially the 1%, it's something that they would never bring up themselves. It's something that we have to force them to do. And one of the things that Move to Amend is trying to do around the country, in concert with other organizations who are advocating for a constitutional amendment, like Public Citizen, Free Speech for People, People for the American Way, Get Money Out, uh, PAC, uh, the Young Church New Program. Basically, we're trying to go to all of the Occupy movements and give them solutions. Basically, ask them, what do you care about? What do you think is wrong? Why do you think that's wrong? It's the same answer every time. It's the examples I said before, it's examples that you should, could research yourself. It's the corporations. It's the corporations in concert with government. I'm not saying government is blameless. I will not say that. 
But that doesn't mean we should get rid of government. It might mean that we should fundamentally change government. And one of the ways to do that is with a constitutional amendment. And the constitutional amendment is not the solution to the problem. It's the start. Over 800,000 people around the country have already signed some petition or another. Um, Jeremy, one of uh, my Move to Amend LA members, has some petitions there if you'd like to sign or if you'd like to get involved or if you'd like to start a group in Long Beach. We've had one Los Angeles group for a very long time, but one of our national spokesmen came by about two months ago and we have about 150 more members now. But even if you don't want to join, But even if you don't want to join, you research and demand things from your politicians. And we want to make this one of the central demands of the entire Occupy movement. Because we feel, since the movement has resonated so much with so many people, it can significantly reduce the time it takes to get a constitutional amendment. If we make that demand now to our country at large, but on election day to every politician who wants our vote, like, do you think that you, do, will, will you commit to limiting corporate rights? Will you commit to amending the Constitution? No, I'm going to vote for somebody else. One of the other things I want to say really quickly before I uh, stop is that I was also in D.C. for the Rebuild the Dream conference in early October. And one of the things that I got to admit, I haven't loved hearing about the Occupy movement is that we are a leaderless movement. It's not true. No, we're a we are a leaderful movement. I've heard a bunch of people say it before. I'd like to hear more and more people say it. Because one of the things that's been missing in the last 30 years is our voice. We, we let other people go to Washington and do this and do that. We, we speak up amongst ourselves or people who already fucking agree with us. But we don't go out and try to convince other people. And I think beyond the mere constitutional amendment, which I hope you'll find a group or join our group and sign, we need more people to run for office. We can't change the system completely from the outside, though I advocate an outside strategy. We need to push from the inside, too. We need to push it from both directions so it collapses. So to end, I'd just like to say, uh, join us, sign up if you will. If not, go to unitedforthepeople.org, uh, and that's united, the number four, dot org, and you'll find a number of other organizations that are advocating to amend the Constitution. But even if you don't do those other things, think about running for office.